Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to focus on a couple of exciting things on the piano. First of all, chord voicing for the left hand. I think there are some nice strategies in this video which can benefit you greatly to make your chords sound a lot more deeper, a lot more richer, powerful, at the same time very expressive and very unique and uh, you could also argue very jazzy or th that sort of a thing. And in the right hand versus the left hand, we are going to coordinate our hands with a very simple arpeggio which I have developed as you heard in the intro video. We are going to play that arpeggio in two different time fields. Time field is essentially how you divide the beat. So we'll do it in sets or divisions of four. We'll do it in sets of many things actually. And then divisions of two, three and four. And then organically try to grow some awesome music together. So you need to bring your keyboards out and learn with me as it's a step by step workflow okay so I'm first going to talk about the chords the voicing in the left hand a few alternative options in the right hand and after we look at the lesson from a chord voicing or a harmony perspective we will then look at it from a entirely rhythmic perspective and the rhythmic perspective is also intended to help you improvise your own stuff in this lesson we are tying ourselves down to just the four notes which I'm going to show you but in the future you can always go forward with this in many different ways and hand independence on the piano can be practiced in so many forms you can do bass in the left hand you can do melody in the right hand you can sing and also train your hand independence you can do chord patterns here arpeggios there there are so many permutations of hand independence and it's a widely searched topic as well on the internet so what you could also do at the end of the video after finishing it of course is head over to our uh, playlist which is in the description on hand independence and you'll find a lot of learnings on those subjects and we also have a lot of topics on voicing of chords we have spread voicing wherein we again focus on the left hand territory and we look at uh, other open voicings used for jazz music and blues music so there's a lot on our channel if you're a first time visitor and if you're new to the channel or if you're old to the channel or whatever be the case if you haven't subscribed to our channel it'll be awesome if you could hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications and all of the notes for this lesson are neatly saved on our patreon page you can head over there and you'll find pretty much all the notes for this lesson and stuff we've done in the past and also what we'll be continuing to do in the future for just a five dollar subscription a month so let's get started with the lesson i hope you've got your keyboards out so first of all the right hand's going to play a simple c f g b flat you could play it above or you could play it low up to you let's start above which is the c above middle c this is middle c this is the C above middle C. What do we call this chord? Theoretically, you could call this a C7 sus4. Okay. And the left hand is going to produce three chords. And I'm going to explore those chords in three different complexities, which will stretch out your hand more and more. So if you're a kid watching this video and if your hands cannot stretch, don't worry, there will be a voicing for you or in general, if your hands don't stretch. However, I would encourage you all to consider playing basketball or a sport which might widen your hands. Just kidding or maybe not, who knows? Maybe basketball actually helps, I'm not an expert. So in the left hand, first of all, the chords are some kind of C minor then some kind of A flat major and then some kind of F major okay and I like to think of the chords as being part of what I call as a hybrid minor scale the hybrid minor scale is a scale wherein the sixth can either be a flat six or a normal major sixth and the seventh can be a normal seventh major seventh or a flat seven also known as a minor 7. So that's what I like to call as a hybrid minor scale. So then you can po pull in chords from all these different intervals and play them together. So uh, C minor, A flat major and F major. However, we are not going to play the chords like that. So voicing technique number one would be a sparse voicing using seventh chords. So C minor, I'm going to play it as this. 
C G B flat. Now you could either go C G B flat or you could even add in that F whenever you feel it doesn't sound so muddy or so uh, you know annoying maybe to the ear. This sounds good actually. So you could stack over an F, but if you find your fingers are a bit uh, tense, you can ignore that F and just do C G B flat. So the notes would be C G B flat, C G B flat with an alternate C F B flat. So you could either play C F B flat, C G B flat. They both sound good. So C F B flat could be. a quartal voicing of the c c7 sus4 chord a c uh, with g and b flat could be a c minor 7th or even visualized as a c7 sus4 with a sparse voicing by sparse i mean you're ignoring one or two notes of the chord so this is c minor originally you would play it like that right but this is a bit muddy and sounds a bit bad down below as well so This is a nice way to open it out. This is a nice way to play it as well. Then when we come to A flat major, instead of playing it like this, I'm going to play it like this. A flat, E flat and G. That would be root perfect fifth major seventh and no third. You could also refer to this as A flat major seventh in brackets. Some people write no three. So So there's no three there. So I think three will add again, make it quite muddy, and maybe a bit tricky on the fingers. So you can get the same similar color without that C. I think this is nice. So chord number one, C seventh, then A flat major seventh, no three perhaps, and the third chord would be F. F dominant seventh. Now F dominant seventh, you could play like this one seven octave, but a colorful way to play it would be one five seven flat. One five seven flat F C E flat. Okay, so I'm going with this as the initial voicing strategy. So you have C F B flat or C G B flat, and then you go. A flat, E flat, G, and then F, C, E flat, F dominant. Or, if you wish, you can also do F, E flat, F. It is not so colorful, so you could do this. So let's do this with the right hand playing a simple arpeggio, or two simple arpeggios. The first one would just be semi quavers, where you count. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, with that chord I taught you earlier, C F G B flat. So C F G B flat, C F G B flat, semi quave. Two, 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 three, four, one. And the left hand we can play the pulse. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. one and if you observe the left hand there's a little bit of a chord structuring going on i'm playing the first chord because it's the root or the tonic chord i'm playing it a bit longer so i'm playing c minor for four counts 2 3 a flat major 7 for only two counts f dominant for only two counts so 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 Play it with me. I'm going to do it very slowly and go. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if your right hand gets bored doing semi quavers, it can then start doing another time feel, which is called as triplets. So that will be. Three, four, one and two and three and we can say one and two and three and four and tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. Or in India we say tuck it up. And if you want some variety in the triplets, you can do C F B flat, or you can do C G B flat, or you could do a combo of both. 
CFG FG B flat. So it's a package of three. It still feels like a triplet. So again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. This will also be nice if you're playing faster triplets, like uh, semi-quaver triplets, 16 note triplets. Right? Uh, let, let's go to normal uh, quaver triplets or 8th note triplets. Next chord, A flat major 7th. Then... F dominant 7th. Let's do that again with the left hand. Normal quaver 8th note triplets. A flat major 7th. F 7th. 7th sus 4. Major 7th. Dominant 7th. With that sparse voicing of no 3rd ideally. Except for the C7 sus4, which you can play all four notes, come to think of it. Or without the G, or without the without the F. Okay, so you can do semi-quavers or triplets in your right hand. And coming back to the left hand, so voicing strategy number one was what I could call as a within the octave voicing strategy. Where you're never going beyond that high C. But now voicing strategy is moving forward, we'll expand our hand a bit more. So, first chord in, in the original style, what we learned first, chord number one, chord number two, chord number three. That would be C minor seventh or C7 sus4, A flat major seventh, F dominant seventh. Now, as we journey forward, what you can do is open out your voicing more by doing what we call as fifth voicing or quintal voicing or uh, what I would also call as ninth voicing, where you go one, five, and then the second degree of the root, but played an octave higher. As we play it an octave higher, we call it a ninth. Because a ninth, when played an octave higher, generally wants to believe or assume that there'll be a third somewhere and you don't want to clutter it up by playing it inside. If we played inside, the sound would be very muddy. So we call it a nine for various reasons. I guess the main reason is because there's a third and a seventh in the chord or more specifically a seventh. So all of the chords now let us voice using ninths. One, five nine that's c g d you could also look at it as two perfect fifths around the circle of fifths in clockwise direction c g d a flat a flat e flat b flat and then f c g okay c g d a flat e flat b flat f c g very open and you can play this can play this very low. It's also very modern rock or heavy, heavy guitar music. You'll find them voicing the chords generally this way as it's cooler, I guess. Otherwise, you're one note lesser or one note. In this case, you're one note more than creating a power chord. This is a power chord, which I think is not so colorful. While this tells a story. And you can even play it lower. It's very open. So all my chords now with the uh, semi-quaver in the right hand. Let's try. All ninth chords. Or you could call them add nine chords without the third. Try it with your triplets. Back to semi. Semi quavers, sixteenth notes. And 
like this kind of open style of playing chords because theoretically you can compose on either you can say dorian or aeolian in this kind of context dorian would be a major scale with a flat 3 and a flat 7 so you can do la da 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 do do la da da or you can do da da which is a flat 6 that makes it aeolian la da 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 di do 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 la that also kind of works because you are not committing to either a or a flat in this voicing right so that's voicing strategy number 2 guys and voicing strategy number 3 will really stretch out the hands but gain a lot of the jazz intervals out there so that would be the first chord c minor would now be played as root flat 7 and 9th so this would be a c minor 9th or some 9th chord probably call this a minor ninth because i'm in a minor world so c minor ninth and now the a flat chord could be played as this voicing now this is a ninth but there's a six also so we call this as a a flat 6 9 chord it's a 6 9 voicing and then f i'm going to play it as a f dominant chord with the dominant seventh and the ninth there it's you could look at it as an f ninth but in the left hand you don't have the i guess the budget to play that many notes or the bandwidth to play that many notes because of the frequencies colliding with each other so it'll if you were to it'll sound very muddy so this is a simple way of playing it so you could say third chord is f ninth without the third and the fifth or no three no five so first chord i'd leave it to you i think you could even now combine the voicings together the first chord you could perhaps just keep playing like this because your right hand's anyways doing that so just to keep it kind of clear or unified you could perhaps play the first chord like this and whenever you you're done with the practice you can open up into the jazz higher voicings okay i'm just going to show you the higher voicings now c ninth and then a flat 6 9 f9 repeat a flat 6 9 f9 but without the 3 and 5 you could also play it in this 7 sus 4 no problem or this way this will stretch out your hand a bit more you need to stretch at least to a ninth but only a ninth that's it's not too f- too much of a stretch actually and a good way to kind of get this stretch a good trick would be to move your entire hand away or away from the keyboard or towards you and if you observe my thumb my thumb is just clinging on to the d a lot of people think that you should play the keys here not necessarily you can play them here sometimes you can play them inside you can do all sorts of things at the end of the day the key is just a a trigger for an eventual hammer which whacks the strings of the piano and then resonates on the through the soundboard so your job is to somehow trigger that hammer you can do it with your thumb uh, all the way down or in worst case scenarios you could also perhaps use your nose perhaps so you this would be the extended voicing and then you have f9 and then that a flat 6 9 chord there so let's go through all the voicings we have and then move on specifically towards rhythm so voicing number 1 within the octave c 7 sus 4 a flat major 7th f dominant 7th without the 3 of course voicing strategy number 2 the quintal or the fifth voicing with perfect fifths or you can call them as add nines very open sounding c add 9 a flat add 9 f add 9 the third voicing which is more jazz using the jazz extensions like the 9 and the 13 would be the 1 7 flat and 9 voicing then the 6 9 voicing for the left hand and then the 
back to the 7 9 for f9 we'll call this is an f9 so that's about your chords that's about your voicing so moving on to the second half of the lesson which won't be that much theoretical it's just going to involve rhythm maths and how you can coordinate your two hands so there are two ways of generally doing things on a musical instrument whether it's melody chords arpeggios or whatnot first off you need to divide the beat by something you divide by two you divide by three divide by four five or whatever and then after you divide we tend to have some obvious packages of notes which are created that would be at the division rate for instance if i divide by two i also want to play my notes in sets of two if I divide by 3, I play my notes in triplets, in sets of 3. If I divide by 4, I want to play probably semi-quavers, which is sets of 4. But this whole lesson is going to kind of take our mind away from that. And that's going to improve your independence on the piano, as people call it. So, your left hand is going to keep, keep things very simple. We'll just do the pulse. 3, whatever voicing you enjoy. 2, 3, 4. And the left hand, I'm not going to talk about the left hand anymore. We've looked at a lot of options. So it will just be the right hand with respect to the left hand now. So I showed you the general division system between the right and the left hand already to some level. First off, we had semi-quavers, semi-quavers, then triplets. One, two, semi-quaver, one knee. Okay, so that's your division system. So you can divide by 2, you can divide by 4, you can divide by <clears throat> 3. I'm not going to divide by 2, maybe we'll do it later. But let's start with the notion of dividing by 4. And let's take the same semi-quaver idea. We are saying 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e e and a 4e e and a 1e e and a 2. So this is dividing by 4 but playing a set of four notes and that set is you could argue subjective because all human beings could value a set differently a set of data but this is made very obvious because of the physics of what's going on that is pitch is changing in a very periodic way it's low higher higher highest or even if it was highest uh, lower uh, even lower the lowest that also sets up a mental pattern of four groups of notes right one two three four one two three four one so the whole idea in this lesson is to break that notion go against the the mind's natural response but continue in the same world of beat division so i'm going to keep dividing by four one e and a two e and a three e and a four e but I'm going to phrase it differently. So we use the word phrase, we use the word accent, grouping. I'm just using the word sets of something. So you're dividing by four. And in this explanation, divide by four and sets of four. So there's division of four and a musical performance, which is a set of four notes. Now I want to do divide by four and set of three. And that's going to start sounding really cool. Check this out. So if I do... One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. In my mind, actually, and the maths behind all this is one E and a two E. I'm still doing a takka dimmi, takka dimmi, dividing by four. But now I package it physically on the piano as in threes. One, two, three, or you could keep that. Let me just take C, F, B flat, which is an obvious visual set of three, as you can all see. But I'm not doing it in triplets. I'm not doing... That's triplets, right? I'm doing one E and a, one E and a. But now, keeping that same speed or that same rate of flow and doing... Three, one, two, three. So you could argue, you can even count... One two three 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 one two 
and it takes a long time to resolve you need to go back to your uh, fifth or sixth grade maths class and learn up uh, lcm and hcf uh, least common multiple and all of those sort of things to actually understand what's going on or when the two hands actually recycle which is a very interesting fact because if you do 3 meets 5 then you need to know the end result where it is 15 three fives are 15 right so now want tuck it i could even say tuck it tuck it tuck it tuck it tuck it but the beat division continues to stay the same and this also is a little bit of a tester for music notation because how do you notate this in an inspiring way for a reader in classical music i guess this the, the concept of sets sets grouping accents was not so much there but you could still go ahead and put the accent sign but the grouping is usually in fours in classical music so at least for me personally it's very tough to read certain things with the sheet notation because it's not inspiring at all and it confuses me because i still look at it as a set of four it's a visual set of four an actual sonic set of 3 and a maths division of 4 so that's creating a lot of conflict if you ask me so i would say pause on the reading when you do this lesson you don't need to read too much you just need to play by feel and look at your piano it's one e and uh, your semiquavers but now i take sets of 3 in the same speed so you want if you want to get this tight with your bo- get it first with your body and say things like 1e e and 2e and 3e and or in easier indian words takadimi 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 tak now change the takadimi it's very simple takadimi takadimi change it to takit 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 tak the same speed of takadimi but in the words of takita which is three takita ta, and automatically your tha becomes a important phenomenon dim takidimi takadimi takadim takita 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 tak it also creates an interesting polyrhythmic vibe if you ever want to take this into the polyrhythmic world because takita 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 tak that's 1 2 3 4 it's very much of poly to tak so tak it tak it tak it tak it so tak it i want to now play it here there we go so what's happening now we've divided by 4 sets of 3 and dividing by 4 sets of 4 was easy that's what we've been doing throughout the lesson well what about something which maths has to offer which then we have to push ourselves to doing on the instrument divide by 4 sets of 5 why not now for sets of 5 the pinky is sleeping a bit so let's wake the guy up there we go you can add that note which is just a simple octave nothing or you can add a d which would make it a nice ninth addition i'm just keeping it to c for now now 1e e and 2e e, right 1e e and 2 now check this out making it 5 look at gin to tak gin to tak gin to tak gin i'm saying 5 for now as tak gin to 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 ta it's going to take a lot of cycles to kind of repeat itself right there we go so it's it's a great way to kind of make your arpeggio stand out maybe you can use this as an intro of a song you could use it as the bridge of the song and while your entire band is playing some bass notes you know they could all kind of phrase on those specific accents even though internally these are not quintuplets these are not dividing by 5 these are sets of 5 this is a human made set of 5 what was made by mother nature is how the beats got divided right the maths 
is dividing time by four you cannot control that 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 has been governed by mother nature but what we as humans can then do is to make it subjective and use again the properties of physics which are pitch volume and time or duration to craft it to serve our own brain so to speak so we have sets of three possibility i showed you sets of four sets of five you also have the trivial set of two which could also work a bit boring because it's a uh, it, it's uh, anyway dividing by 4 and 2 is a even number but if you think about it, it makes the performance a lot less lazier than this if i now do sets of 2 there we go and just to conclude the lesson let's flip the whole process around i don't want to divide by 4 rather i would like to divide by 3 so let's start with usual good old triplets now i want to do this but have a set in my mind this is sets of 3 dividing by 3 normal i guess we've already done this what if we do sets of 4 and dividing by 3 one so first say the division tak it ta tak it ta tak it ta tak it ta tak and now going tak it ta tak 1 2 3 one two three four one 2 3 4 completely different perspective 1234123 tak dimi tak dimi tak dimi ta tak dimi tak dimi ta but in my mind we are going tak it we are dividing by 3 actually right tak it tak it triple it triple it triple it so i st starting again with triplet now giving myself a set tak dimi tak it ta tak dimi tak dimi tak it so it'll take 3 cycles to recycle again to get the number of cycles it would take you use the lcm of the two numbers so if you take 3 and 4 lcm 3 fours are 12 or 12 multiplies both those numbers right it multiplies 3 as well as 4 there we go now i've become a maths teacher maybe you should uh, invite people here to learn some maths let's go for it so you go 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1234123412341234 and then of course you have all sorts of other phenomenon you can do uh, dividing by 3 but sets of 2 2 rather too congested so let's do sets of 5 while dividing by 3 so that would be again we pull out our pinky so you'll get 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 but with that five feel and why not start with the pinky all through the lesson i have been going up why can't we go down 1234512345123451234512345 there we go the cards the challenge will now be to play each of these cards four times you should remember that or the first card four times the second card two times and the third card two times as we said you almost don't care when they resolve whether if they are ever well they will resolve mathematically but you don't need to care because you are already in the division world as well as the set world almost together it's almost like you've split your brain into two or you are two people thinking together so to speak so the piano is a is a freak of an instrument if you think about it if if ever 
I were to compare this with anything, I would compare it with a drum kit. I could not compare it with anything else, which I can think of at least. So uh, have fun with the exercise. And just to recap, we've done some voicing in part A. And in part B, we have done all this sets, grouping, accents, and uh, we've done beat division as well. So hopefully you find this useful. Have fun practicing it. And I have an Instagram channel as well. You can record your work and send it. You can tag me and I'll be happy to, to share it and listen to it and so on. And if you're a patron, you can also chat with me, send me your assignments. You can check out the tires we have and also receive the notes as part of your subscription. You'll receive all of the notes for this lesson. You also receive MIDI tracks, you receive backing tracks and a, and a ton more. Right, guys, thanks a ton for watching the video. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.